A few weeks ago, Wheelhouse made an episode about how hydrogen cars were supposed to be the future of automobiles. And in that episode, Nolan, he made a pretty good economic argument for why they failed. An argument that everyone's favorite billionaire, Elon Musk, might agree with. X-A-E-A-X-I-I -I Senior, he hasn't had the best things to say about hydrogen powered cars. But like all things car related, I get curious about the engineering side of things. Outside of the politics, why couldn't the car of the future be hydrogen powered? Well, today on B2B, we're gonna take a look at hydrogen fuel tech and explain why Elon Musk might just be wrong about hydrogen cars. Let's -a go. Thanks to Off The Record for sponsoring today's video. It's summertime, so you know what that means. Sun's out. Guns out. Well, after a year of low ticket revenue, speeding tickets are going to be a plenty this summer. That's why you need the Off The Record app downloaded on your phone. They've got a network of attorneys that can help fight off your ticket and even offer a full refund if they're not able to either reduce or keep it off your driving record. So don't get burned by a pricey speeding ticket. Register now and use code DONUT and you can take 10% off your first ticket at offtherecord.com slash donut. Now, before we get into why exactly Elon Musk is wrong, let's talk about how hydrogen powered cars actually work. Hydrogen cars use something called a fuel cell to power the car. And a fuel cell is a power source that converts chemical energy from fuel, in this case hydrogen, and an oxidizing agent, usually oxygen, into electricity through a series of chemical reactions. The specific type of reaction is called an oxidation reduction reaction. In these types of reactions, there's a transfer of electrons between elements. Certain elements, or as chemists call it, species, are the reducing agents. Those are the ones that lose electrons, while other chemical species are the oxidizing agents. Those are the ones that gain electrons. Those electrons, those are important. Their movement is what's going to create electricity, which is what's creating the power in a hydrogen car. There are a lot of different kinds of fuel cells, but they all consist of a few key components. A positive terminal, the anode, a negative terminal, the cathode, and an electrolyte. Now I'm gonna learn y'all something today, boys and girls. This is how I remember, so I don't panic. Positive is anode, negative is cathode. It really should be panic, but I didn't create it, that's just how I learned it. Okay, and quick disclaimer, this mnemonic works for fuel cells like this, but there are other types of cells where there's flops. It's confusing, I know. But it's best to remember that regardless of the polarity, the electrode where oxidation takes place is called the anode. Oxidation equals anode. Therefore, reduction takes place at the cathode. At the positive terminal, we have our hydrogen. When hydrogen atoms come in contact with a catalyst at the positive terminal, its electron gets removed, leaving you with a bunch of positively charged hydrogen ions and negatively charged electrons. Hydrogen ions, they're just hydrogen atoms without their electrons. Those positively charged hydrogen ions see the negative terminal across the way and pass through the electrolyte to get there. That electrolyte, it's a material that allows for hydrogen ions to pass through, but blocks the passage of electrons. But those electrons, okay, they still wanna get through and meet back up with their hydrogen ions. So they pass through a set of wires that's connected to a motor. And it's that flow of electrons, that movement of electrons that powers the motor. Once they pass through the motor, they end up at the negative terminal. At the negative terminal, something a little different happens here. Here we have another catalyst, but this catalyst causes the ions, electrons, and oxygen to react together and form water. That is the waste of the fuel cell. I always find it difficult to remember this stuff, so here's a good analogy, okay? You got a girlfriend, right? And together, you're a perfect little happy hydrogen atom. And one evening, you decide to go out to LA's hottest nightclub, hey, Le Bouffe, where things take a turn. Alcohol, the catalyst, creates an argument between the two of you and you break it off right there on the dance floor. You guys split, okay? Now you're not a happy hydrogen atom anymore. No, you're an electron and your girlfriend, she's a hydrogen ion. Well, she looks up and she sees some hot boy in VIP and starts making her way over to him. So naturally, you follow her because you're instantly regretting your decision and you're jealous. But there's a bouncer there, okay? He's the electrolyte. He's not letting you in. <laughs> your girlfriend, oh yeah. Yeah, she can pass through. But you, 
No way, Jose. Gotta get in some other way. Now you don't like being a free electron. You need someone. You're negative and needy and you gotta get to her positivity before something bad happens. So you sneak around through the outside fire escape and it leads to a rafter that you can walk over that will drop you right down into VIP. You get there and luckily your mutual friend Oxygen. Oh, and Oxygen's there and she's mediating and helping you guys work it out. And with her help, you guys get back together and you make water. <laughs> they say the perfect analogy was impossible. And I say to you, nothing's impossible. Now up to this point, you might be thinking, this all sounds pretty similar to batteries and EVs. So what's the difference here? The main advantage of a fuel cell vehicle is that it doesn't run down or need to be recharged. The fuel cells are built into the chassis in what's called a fuel cell stack. Inside these stacks are groupings of individual cells that sit side by side. A single fuel cell produces less than one volt, which doesn't do you too much. But combining these cells in series and parallel, you can create enough voltage and current to power your electric motor or electric motors. Every time you wire a cell in series, you double the voltage. Every time you wire a cell in parallel, you double the current. So by creating a combination of various cells wired in these configurations, you can optimize your cell configuration to meet the demands of your motors. Now we all know where good old fashioned electricity comes from, the wall, okay? And it got there from a transformer outside your house. And it got there from a distribution substation. But before that, it came from a transmission substation. And it got there from towers. And it got there from step-up transformers to those transformers from the power plant. Now, if that's how EVs get their juice, where does hydrogen come from? Hydrogen is the most abundant element in the universe. But you just can't suck up hydrogen like you can crude oil from a pump jack. There are a couple ways in which hydrogen fuel can be made, and the two most common are natural gas reforming and electrolysis. Natural gas reforming is a thermal process in which you get superheated steam to react with a hydrocarbon fuel, like methane, to produce hydrogen. But this reaction releases carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide into the atmosphere, which contributes to climate change. That negates the whole idea behind using a more eco-friendly fuel. And I'll just say it right now, if you need some superheated methane, look no further than this guy. In electrolysis, electricity is run through water to separate the hydrogen and oxygen atoms. This method can use wind, solar, geothermal, hydro, fossil fuel, biomass, nuclear, and many other energy sources. Now, obtaining hydrogen from this process is being studied as a viable way to produce it domestically at a very low cost. Electrolyzers, they come in all different shapes and sizes. Some are small, about the size of a kitchen appliance, say a toaster but they can also get huge, like the ones used in these production facilities. If we're talking about powering cars using hydrogen captured via electrolysis, we're talking about this larger scale. Although it would be pretty sick if we had a toaster size electrolysis machine. We did an entire episode here on B2B a few weeks back on Porsche's e-fuel, where we talk about this. If you want, you should watch it after you finish this episode. Also, if you like this kind of stuff, hit that like button and subscribe. It lets me know that you guys like these videos and you wanna see more of them. If you don't wanna see more of these videos, hit the not like video, then I'll know. It's okay, it won't hurt my feelings. Don't do it. <laughs> Similar to gas powered cars, pressurized hydrogen is sold at special hydrogen refueling stations so you can fuel up with hydrogen in less than four minutes. Fill her up and then ring her out. The infrastructure of hydrogen refueling stations is something we're already accustomed to. Okay, great. So we know how hydrogen powered cars get their power. We know where they get their fuel from, but let's get down to the important stuff. Can hydrogen cars snap your neck back? There, being, there are a slew of EVs being sold that will tickle your speed bone, but can hydrogen technology make fast cars? We know that there are some slow ones. The 2021 Toyota Mirai goes zero to 60 in 9.1 seconds. That's not good, that's terrible. So not good that I'd like to hold a 9.1 second moment of silence as there's a Mirai out there merging onto a highway, terrifying other drivers as it gets up to 60 miles per hour. Everyone, please join me. Luckily, there's the Hyperion XP1 to show the world the potential for high-performance hydrogen. 
the XP1 claims to get from zero to 60 in 2.2 seconds with a top speed of 221 miles per hour. Not only that, it has a range of a thousand miles. Now, I would love to dive deep into the science of how they're getting all this speed and performance out of a hydrogen powered car, but unfortunately, there's not a lot of information out there on it. But what I do know is that if electric vehicles can create high performance, hydrogen electric vehicles can do the same thing. It's the electric motors that's causing them to be able to go so fast and produce a lot of speed. You're just using hydrogen now to create the electricity to power those electric motors. So how does this compare with gas cars? On gasoline engines, you have fuel, which are hydrocarbons, and oxygen that are combusted, and the waste is carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, nitrogen oxide, sulfur dioxide, and any unburned fuel. With hydrogen cars, you get waste so fresh, you can actually drink it. I'm sorry. Fuel cell cars are no more dangerous than the car you're currently driving. When you transport hydrogen to refueling stations, it poses a safety risk. The industrial sector has already been transporting hydrogen like this for decades. So we know how to do it and we know how to do it safely. Right now, there aren't many hydrogen stations to refuel at. If anything is holding back fuel cell cars, it's a lack of infrastructure. But people made this same argument when the current wave of electric vehicles were still in their infancy. So I'm not super worried about that never changing. If we wanna build it, we're gonna build it. Franklin D. Roosevelt, Kanan our editor. <laughs> Even the pros are on board. Execs running the world's major car companies agree that fuel cells may very well be the way of the future. In the 2017 Global Automotive Executive Survey, 78% of auto executives were found to believe that hydrogen fuel cells have a better long-term future than electric cars. And 62% said that the infrastructure challenges could result in the collapse of the battery-powered electric vehicle market, leaving space for hydrogen to swoop on in. Ooh, Elon, oh, are you nervous? So do they work? Yes. Are they successful? Yes. Does the technology have a promising future? Yes. Is this all happening in the new future? Well, we'll see. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you ever want more donut content, Become a Donut Underground follower. Donut Underground is a membership for our diehard fans where they can meet more car enthusiasts and get special content that we just can't show or are not allowed to show on our main channel. Follow us here at Donut on Instagram at Donut Media. Follow me at Jeremiah Burton. And until next week, bye for now.